I'll be completely honest with you viewers, I don't think Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon is an easy game to review in many ways. If you'll forgive the cliché, you might well find it to be a game of two halves, with the first half being a bit of a slog. On paper, piloting a giant robot armed to the tits with guns, lasers and missiles certainly sounds like a great time, and there is a huge amount of fun to be had here, but you'll need to be willing to put in the work first. As soon as you start playing the game, you'll notice some stark contrasts. The levels can look absolutely stunning, and pretty bland and basic. The controls are fluid, responsive and enjoyable, and a messy pain in the ass. There are a ton of customization options, many of which appear to be bugger all use. To boil it all down to basics, the idea here is to complete entirely separate missions, ranging anywhere from just a couple of minutes to roughly half an hour in duration, unlocking weapons and components for your mech to endlessly tinker with, in order to adapt to the challenges ahead. True to form for a From Software game, your starting build stands about as much chance as a fat ginger 12 year old on a senior's football team, and despite making as many tweaks in the earlier levels as your meagre resources will allow, it often seems as though you have no choice but to commence Operation Bend Over and Take It indefinitely, as you're repeatedly savaged by the same boss or group of enemy mechs. It doesn't help that From Software's normally reliable camera and lock-on targeting can be quite haphazard here, and coupled with some sudden difficulty spikes in certain levels, it can lead to frustration that might prove too much for some fairly early on. To make matters less appealing, a lot of the levels feel like empty window dressing, with almost nothing to find and offering no reason to explore beyond the necessary mission objectives. It can often seem like all you're doing is just taking one long run-up to the inevitable boss fight. There are a few decent bosses, as you'd expect with this developer, but probably not as many as you'd hope for. Most of the best fights had already been revealed in the game's pre-release trailers, and quite often you'll go up against an AC unit that looks very similar to your own machine, before beginning an all too familiar dance of simply circling around each other with the fire buttons held down. The story is incredibly dull, centred around various corporate factions mining for a lucrative substance known as coral. Your mission brief is shoveled out via a bland voiceover and accompanying text between missions, the kind of thing that normally goes on for about three weeks in Metal Gear Solid, and you'll be skipping through it as quickly as you can spam the continue button. I've heard several commentators try and defend the story as a much more adult yarn. Well, putting out the recycling and buying car insurance is adult, but I don't need to hear about it for hours on end. So, this is all starting to sound pretty negative, isn't it? And yet, in spite of every problem I've highlighted so far, I was hooked. The genius of From Software's games is the subtle progression and how it's essential that you learn from your mistakes, something you don't necessarily notice you've done until you go back to an earlier stage of the game and destroy a formerly difficult opponent with ease. Armored Core 6 is a game that's designed to be played over and over again, learning new tactics, mastering your timing and unlocking yet more weapons and gadgets, or the money to buy them, to make you even stronger on the next run, and it eventually becomes a really enjoyable power trip. You can dive straight back into any completed level at any point in the game, experimenting with speed and agility builds versus raw power and brutality setups, and you will need to switch at times. Simply having the most armour and the most explosive weapon is no guarantee of success, especially if you're trying to swat a metal mosquito that won't sit still in your sights. When you do eventually hit a wall with a certain level or boss, it might be that seemingly pointless component that you've been ignoring is actually the piece of the puzzle that was missing all along. The piece that takes your health that little bit higher, gives you that speed boost or improves your fire rate so you can finally proceed. Depending on what type of gamer you are, it might sound laborious or absolutely pant-wetting to search for a thousand combinations and settle on the perfect build, and you can take this as far as you want. I found that I eventually settled on one or two base templates, adjusting my weapons when a boss was clearly impervious to certain ammo types, and that got me through a good portion of the game without having to go back to the drawing board too often. At its best, the multi-directional movement and combat can be thrilling to pull off, giving you so many more options than almost any other third-person action game I could think of, and if you stick with it, I promise you that a second run through of the game is even better. In fact, I'd say Take 2 is where the game really came alive for me. 
Going again with all the kit accumulated from across the game allows for a lot more worthwhile experimentation and instantly tangible results. It can level the playing field somewhat against the serious enemies and generally I found myself to be having more fun. New Game Plus will also offer more variety in the missions, adding new sorties and changing up some of those you've already played with branching options. You'll also be offered more lore if you're struggling to find the back of a box of cornflakes to read. Rounding out the Fires of Rubicon package is a brief training mode that will help you get a head start on some of the mechanics and a few bits and pieces to bolster your early mechs, while the visual customization options are plentiful and you can change your style at any time you want for zero cost. There is a small selection of competitive online modes but you'll rarely find anyone playing them and I couldn't find a lobby to record anything for you here. The simple death matches are pretty soulless experiences and trust me when I say that you're not really missing anything. Eventually I really enjoyed stomping around with Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon, but it does require your patience and it can be inconsistent. Armored Core has never been a game for casual players, but Fires of Rubicon is a step towards greater accessibility. Ultimately, the more you invest in the game, the more you'll get back. If you set your expectations accordingly, if you can deal with some early pain and forgive some bland levels and storytelling, there's a great deal to enjoy here, and the relative simplicity delivered in bite-sized chunks is quite refreshing. The game is now also regularly on sale, which might be worth an extra point on the final score for some players. Final score, 8 out of 10. Thanks very much for watching today. If you've played it, what did you make of the game? Is this one you had your eye on and you might dive in now the prices come down? Where do you want to see From Software go next? Let us know in the comments section below and please leave me a like if that's not too much trouble. Otherwise, I'll be back with more news, reviews and recommendations very soon. Cheers for now. Eliminate them as necessary. Final sight.